So this video is going to go over basically how I went about painting up these Tyranids and a lot of it is using really simple techniques and trying to make the most use of my time and becoming more efficient in batch painting and army painting. So I decided to go with um, some white Tyranids and uh, first thing I wanted to do is shade it down. So here I'm using Griff Charger Gray uh, to kind of give it like this bluish gray kind of cyan um, shade in the recesses. And then basically from there, I'm going to start layering up again. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shade down the base. And this is just a real quick way uh, to make it gray. And if I had the gray contrast paint, I would use that too. So next step is I'm going to start dry brushing and, and I'm going to start with gray sear. So here's just a real quick um, demonstration of setting up for dry brushing and that's basically getting paint on your brush and then basically wicking it off until there's almost nothing on your brush or and you can do that with a paper towel or a texture palette whatever works and then basically once you do that you're gonna just kind of brush over all the raised surfaces of the model and you're gonna try not to push into the model so much but you're just gonna try to graze the surfaces and let the paint deposit itself um, on those raised surfaces so this next step is uh, Quark's white and this is kind of like the middle color um, for their skin tone and again I'm just uh, dry brushing over the entirety of the model basically trying to do it as quick as I can um, sometimes it takes you know time I guess all these things take time really but so this step is white and here I'm just using uh, the white I have and sometimes when I run out I just kind of thin down the uh, Liquitex stuff and put it into a dropper bottle. So this is kind of, you know, every step I'm just going to show a little bit where it's at. So the next step is a uh, Gloss Blaster Green and I'm going for this uh, kind of minty color and that's basically because this whole scheme is loosely based on uh, Lunamol and I was walking to work one day and I kind of came across this Lunamol uh, randomly and uh, yeah it looked really cool so I kind of decided that that would be a really cool kind of color scheme to put on these Leviathan Tyranids so I just kind of went along with that it's really bright but you know sometimes painting these brighter colors it does wonders for your mood and you know basically your stress relief um, so the next step is um, I'm making a wash or something washy out of this side right green and using whatever medium you have it doesn't have to be GW medium it could be flow improver uh, it could be water and dish soap um, just basically I'm mixing the medium in so that uh, I get a little bit more consistent um, dry are uh, a little bit more consistent drying um, with it but uh, in the end I always end up adding a little bit of water and soap anyway so so here's just uh, basically washing it down and I'm doing that so I can give a little bit of shade to this really bright color and basically using a color that is just a little bit darker than this really bright color this really bright mint and after that, uh, we're going to highlight it using white. And this is the part where, um, you know, I'm highlighting, but at the same time, um, kind of like also continuing to highlight some of the areas I might have missed before on the white skin. And, you know, with these brighter colors and um, having this universal highlight across the model, uh, it really works uh, really well. So next I'm going to... Um, start working on the weapons and the pink so I had a little bit of a dilemma with these models originally I was just going to keep it like white mint and black um, but you know like I said it's kind of loosely based on a Lunamoth and Lunamoths they have like these yellow antenna and then also like these kind of magenta um, you know stripes in their legs and along their wings so I didn't necessarily want to try and do that on all the models so I just kind of went to kind of a purpley magenta pink progression and um, 
I didn't plan on doing anything spectacular with a lot of these and not really that any of the stuff I'm doing is spectacular but um, I did want to give a little bit of diversity in the weapons so here I'm uh, doing a little bit of wet blending on the sword or the bone sword that he has and um, and it's basically just to kind of give some diversity amongst all these weapons like um, I intended to try and keep the whip uh, white but it just ended up kind of looking unbalanced um, having all this color on one side of the model so I basically decided to go back and uh, and paint the whip uh, pink color as well and I discovered that by using uh, you know this voluptuous pink I could forego this step which is shading down the pink with Magos purple and um, you know basically this voluptuous pink uh, did the end result uh, what you can see on the whip uh, with the results on the gun uh, with the shaded Magos purple so I could have saved myself some time there in the future I'll probably just do that instead um, and then so this step here is basically I'm going through and again using a universal highlight but um, this highlight is basically just being used to give me a guide um, on where to kind of highlight uh, the pink parts with a little bit of pink and white mixed together. Um, I didn't really like the scratchiness of the highlight on the pink, so I decided um, to go back and just kind of really, really, really quickly um, just go over it with this pink and white mixture. And it didn't really take all that much time to do, but the end result was pretty cool. So last step is I'm basically going to uh, put Black Templar into the jointed areas. And normally, um, I guess people would paint this like that pink color or something, or that fleshy color, but I wanted a little bit of neutrality in here. And um, I think I was also kind of thinking about, since they're going to be in an Arctic kind of base, that maybe they have like some type of, you know, insulating skin similar to like polar bears or something. Um, and so that's kind of the thought behind that a little bit, but nothing big. Um, just kind of simplify the process and then. So these last couple of steps are just the base and I need to paint the base rim before I do the snow texture on it just so I can avoid getting paint on the snow. I guess some people might not have that problem um, but yeah I just I don't want to take any chances with it so I basically do this with all the models and uh, I'm pretty pretty adamant about always painting my base rims. Um, I saw a lot of YouTubers and other painters that are you know of a really high level and that's one of the tips that they always give people is just making sure that their base rooms are neat and tidy as well as having some type of basing on the model overall so i got this uh this snow texture from ak and here i'm just applying it with a palette knife into a little cup and, and i'm going to use like an old brush uh, to put it onto the base I didn't really do too much to the base. Um, I think I shaded down some of the cork areas to make it look like asphalt a little bit. And then um, I'm just kind of going around and basically putting, you know, some of this stuff in the grooves and whatnot. And I didn't want to cover the base entirely with snow, but kind of give the impression of, of snowfall or an Arctic environment. And lastly, grass tufts. So just putting a little bit of PVA glue on the bottom and sticking them to the base so that I know they'll stay. So that's basically it. This is uh, the completed hive tyrant. And um, everything you saw, I did across all the models in the army. And, you know, really, I guess most importantly, I approached it with the mindset of, uh, you know, completing it and not trying to perfect it. And uh, that really helped me get through it. Now, if you're really obsessive and you want everything to be you know really high tier then you're gonna spend a lot more time but it took me about three weeks to assemble and paint this while working 45 hours a week so it can be done and some people can do this in a weekend you know some people are just crazy like that but anyway it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to do something but the mindset is really important so lastly here's a picture of that Luna Moth uh, I came across while walking to work one day I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your hobby.